It's been really quiet tonight compared to the chaotic. We did have a couple of people that if... Because some folks would put their stuff and then go back and they were like, oh my God, they're cutting the line. Because it filled up again within a nano of a second. Um, so they were almost starting it and I said, just take pictures, let the deputy know. But I'm not in charge of the line, but it just became like an authoritative figure to help navigate the line. Um, but once those ladies kind of like, you know, chilled out a little bit, it was, it was much easier. Unbelievable scene. And this is it. This is the final week. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to be there. Uh, it's going to be closing arguments eve. I mean, every courthouses and courtrooms get crowded, but on closing for closing arguments in a big case, that is the day. Let's bring back in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who's in Fairfax County, Virginia. How have things been um, for those overnight fans waiting in line? It still seems to be a struggle because remember, Vinny, we showed you the other night, they aren't allowed to line up until 1 a.m. And we showed you a video of this stampede from across the street of the courthouse running to be one of the first in line. But they are trying to work out a way where it's fair and organized. We caught up to one of those who waited in line. Let's listen. I have been given information before not to come up until one o'clock and if we were caught onto the campus we were going to get ticketed all of a sudden it's like 12 45 we have the crowd run over to the wall i run over i'm like no the deputy said if you're over here at one o'clock they're going to make you not only just make you go back you have to leave the campus now so i uh, so we get all the way over there then one group said, no, the deputy told us that we can be over there at this specific time at 1245 as long as we were quiet. So I had brought the whole group back over and I said, no, come back over. So they all got back in line and finally it was organized, but it was like hop, hop. There's always something I'm hearing about it when I arrive, in, you know, into the courtroom every day from the people I've really gotten to know, the regulars here that have been here the same as me, like virtually the entire trial. Uh, but they even have people that donate and bring food to feed them in the overnight hours, Vinny, as they wait for a wristband. Again, still given out around 7 a.m. every morning. Donuts, pizza. They watched some Jack Sparrow pirates movies overnight last night too waiting in line they must have heard your recommendation when we were talking to them a couple weeks ago yeah it's it's still unbelievable because when i was there with you the first week yeah there were people there but it was like eh. i went around the corner to the coffee house and people were like what johnny depp's in town what are you talking <laughs> about and now look where we are you know six weeks later okay uh, a rare this is this is a rare moment you found another amber heard supporter right this young woman has been here for several days she's braves the sea of Depp fans each day holding a sign i believe her there's her sign and she hands out a uh, really nifty little bags that she put together that has information about being a victim of domestic abuse that you can call this number it comes with a pin and a piece of candy vinny that she gave us and she it's important for her to be here for many reasons but she's a survivor of domestic abuse and she just really felt bad about amber watching the trial so let's listen to what she told us earlier. And uh, why are you here today? Um, to support Amber Heard. What are you um, hoping, uh, by being here, hoping to accomplish? I don't know if I'm hoping to really accomplish anything. It's just, I, was, I wasn't even like a fan before. Um, but I was looking online because I saw it's like just this whole, like horrific treatment of this woman for seemingly like no reason and there was no one supporting her everyone was just joining in they were turning her sexual assault testimony into a funny TikTok trend where they acted out just they go and they harass her outside of the courthouse every day and they boo at her and they call her a liar they say we don't believe you Amber and it just made me sick it just made my stomach turn I couldn't believe what I was watching and no one was doing anything about it so I just This is what I would want someone to do for me, I guess. Like, if I were all alone and the entire world hated me, 
for telling a truth that they didn't want to hear and they were harassing me, I would hope that someone would care enough to come and support me. So, and I feel like I'm the only one here and that just blows my mind and it breaks my heart. So we also, of course, catch up with many, many Depp fans, Vinny, even a, a mother and daughter today that I've uh, met previously said they even feel bad watching Amber Heard depart the courthouse in the evenings, even in the mornings because of the boos and the jeers that are yelled from this crowd out back. But we have a lot of characters here still. I know I showed you the uh, emoji costume last night. Well, tonight, a woman dressed up as a pirate. Let's watch. So um, I, I guess you're you're dressed up today to, to not just visibly show your support, but do you do you like this character in particular? Oh, I love Jack Sparrow. I've seen all the movies too many times to count. It, the character's iconic. Johnny's iconic. I figured, you know, it's an easy costume. Might as well get noticed. I've got nothing better to do. So, <laughs> so what do you think of the testimony so far? Have you been following it online? I've been following it. I'll, I'll see like compilations on like TikTok or Instagram ads just like seeing the compilations and I, I think it's pretty cool I think Johnny has like a lot of good points I think there's lots of logical fallacies in Amber's case but that's just my opinion And Vinny, I have to give a huge thank you. The voice there, Grace Wong, our senior director of courtroom coverage out here, helping me uh, catch people to talk to them outside the courthouse and our photographers, of course, Justin and Austin and Paul and David really help gather. There's so much content and so much going on here. It really is a team effort and we look forward to you arriving tomorrow. And of course, Virginia. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll be there tomorrow and uh, <laughs> we'll do the whole show right there in front of the courthouse. Um, what was it like today for the departures? Well, this crowd, they not only line the road where Johnny Depp exits the gate in the back of the courthouse, Vinny, but there's about six blocks with people lined up. It's truly like a parade when he leaves the courthouse every night. And, of course, they yell and scream for him. And when he leaves the courthouse, our photographer Austin is there when he, when he arrives, when he departs. And there's some video of him actually leaving the gate. Uh, look at that crowd. It's just continuing to grow and grow. Everyone holding their cell phones up, yelling, holding signs, dressed up. We saw some dinosaur costumes today out and about in the crowd. The alpacas, of course, there as well. And so when Johnny Depp actually departed the courthouse, because this morning he noticed these dinosaur costumes, uh, very noticeable, obviously. So this evening when Johnny Depp left the courthouse, he mentioned something about he hoped the dinosaurs didn't eat the alpacas or something. We'll have to listen to what he says uh, when we show that clip. But he always has something to say to our photographer, Austin. Yeah, this, this is, uh, it, it's unreal. Um, and remember, this is Fairfax County, Virginia. This isn't like it's the middle of a big city. You've got to, like, make your way there, and people have done it. Chanley Painter, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow on the ground at the courthouse. When we come back, we'll bring back in our uh, think tank. Don't go away. I need. In Fairfax County, Virginia, a huge day in Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard as Johnny retakes the witness stand to respond to Amber's testimony. It's insane to hear heinous um, accusations of violence, sexual violence. Did Johnny Depp win the credibility battle in the courtroom? I don't think anyone enjoys having to uh, split themselves open and tell the truth. Did his testimony hold up during cross-examination? There is no picture of a handle of vodka broken on that floor. Is there, Mr. Depp? I, no, I don't see it. Plus, fellow A-lister Kate Moss takes the stand in support of her ex. Did Mr. Depp push you in any way down the stairs? No. On the docket tonight, the Parkland school shooting. The shooter has already pleaded guilty to 17 murders. Now the only question for the jury is life or death. We have a preview. I knew he wasn't okay when he punched 
the window in and said, I'm going to cause karma one day. Plus, Johnny Depp says his career was damaged by the op-ed written by Amber Heard in 2018, four years before all the intimate details of his life and relationship were revealed inside the Virginia courtroom. Tonight's 13th juror question, which was more damaging to Johnny Depp? The op-ed by Amber Heard or the testimony of Johnny Depp? Buckle your seatbelts. This hour of closing arguments starts right now. I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. What an intense day inside the courtroom. A lot of witnesses testifying, but Johnny Depp, clearly the biggest witness of the day. And that back and forth with Benjamin Rottenborn on cross-examination, epic, epic moments. What a back and forth. Two guys not getting along. Two guys trying to win, trying to beat one another. Fascinating to watch. We're going to break it all down for you tonight. Let's get right to it. Let's jump in. I want you to see this. This is the cross-examination of Johnny Depp. Um, one of the things Johnny Depp said on direct examination today when he was recalled to the stand was this was this was the first time he's been carrying this burden for six years, finally in this courtroom, had an opportunity to tell his story. Here's how he was crossed on that. You've claimed several times in this proceeding, Mr. Depp, that this trial is your first chance to tell your story, haven't you? Yes, sir. But that's just not true, is it, Mr. Depp? That is not as, true. As, no, for me it is true. Okay. Well, here's the thing. You, you, the fact is, Mr. Depp, when Dan Wooten wrote an article that was published in The Sun calling you a wife beater, mm -hmm. you brought a lawsuit against The Sun in June of 2018, correct? Yes, sir, brother. And that was, that was six months before Miss Heard ever wrote her op-ed, correct? I don't know. And in the summer of 2020, there was a several-week trial in London against the Sun, correct? Miss Heard was not a party to that trial. She not my question, Mr. Depp. In the article that the Sun wrote that you sued over, you sued for Mr. Wooten calling you a wife beater, correct? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Next question. And in the trial that you subsequently brought, you called a lot of witnesses, right? I don't know what a lot is. I, I don't know. Many people testified on both sides of the trial, correct? Yes, many people. And many exhibits were introduced, correct? Like a trial, yes. Yeah. And you, just like in this trial, you were on the stand for several days in that trial, correct? Yes, sir, I was. And that trial involved the same factual issues that you are litigating here, which is whether objection. you committed Calls domestic abuse illegal. against Amber Heard. Sustain the objection. Next question. You brought that case against the Sun because you were angry at the Sun for calling you a wife beater, correct? Y y yeah, that's and you probably through, a pretty good reason. And you went through that trial in London. Correct? I did indeed, yes. Mr. Depp, you've already had a chance to tell your story, haven't you? No, Objection there were lim answer. great limitations okay. in the UK okay. trial. Okay. No further questions. All right. That's how the cross was finished. I didn't think it was the strongest part of the cross, but what do I know? I'm just, I just host this show. Let's bring in the think tank. They know everything. Joining us tonight in Orlando, Florida, family law attorney, defense attorney, Kyla Coleman is with us. In Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor, Nima Romani. And in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented Jody Arias and the author of the book series, Trapped with Ms. Arias, Kirk Nurmi with us. So here's, here's the problem I have with this. I'm going to start with Nima because he talks. Don't you talk a lot about that UK trial? You keep reminding us about that. That was a different, whole different scenario. Number one, he was suing the son. Number two, the way they do trials over there, much different than here. He takes the stand, he's being questioned by the other side. So he's being cross-examined. Never really gets to tell that narrative story that he told us here um, in, in, in Virginia. And three, 
in England, a couple things. One, they don't let cameras inside. They don't let microphones. And for whatever reason, I still don't know, in 2022, they're still wearing wigs. So, Nima, is that fair? You know, Vinny, I agree with you completely. Completely different case there. Obviously, Amber Heard's lawyers desperately tried to get this judgment in. It was something that was argued earlier this week. The judge wasn't having it. So this was Rottenborn's way of backdooring it in. You know, really, Depp was phenomenal today. His redirect, that last question he answered before court broke for lunch, probably the best testimony I've seen Frank during this trial. And really the only criticism I have of Johnny today, the only is how he addressed the text messages. He's really pitched a perfect game. Just admit that those were your messages. Yeah. He did during the first testimony, but not so much today. But other than that, A plus performance by Johnny Depp today, Vinny. Tyler, how do you hold up on cross? You know, for me, cross examination is, is yeah, it's about the answers to the questions, but it's also about Who's controlling the moment? Uh, what did exactly. you, how did you feel it went on cross-examination? Exactly. Like I told you before when I've come on here, cross-examination, when I'm in the courtroom, it is my show. In this particular case, it looked like it was Johnny's show. Um, I think that he's done a great job overcoming um, or changing throughout the trial. I think when he first was on the stand earlier in the case, he was kind of very talking slow and not you know, relatable with the, the jury. But now it's very simple answers. He's telling the truth. He's His body language is good. He's not trying to fight with the attorney. But he does make the attorney look a little unintelligent sometimes um but i'm really not impressed with this cross-examination at all i think john did a great job kirk what are your thoughts about uh the cross and who's who controlled the courtroom today because you know johnny depp on direct we've been talking about it finished with an exclamation point um a lot of great stuff in the rebuttal case for johnny depp but how about the cross-examination the true test of any witness yeah, I think this was the best cross exam we've seen out of Team Heard, but I think it's a too little too late. I think the cake has already been baked and Johnny is kind of Teflon at that point in time, especially as Nima referenced that last few minutes, the closing question on direct, he talked about his feelings and getting things off his back and what have you. I think that really connected to the jury. They could really empathize that he's been fighting these battles. And this cross-examination on that point as it related to the son in England really wasn't that effective. And you're right, he just kept controlling the narrative. And we put that into context of all the other testimony. Even Nima brought up the text messages and Johnny talked about the alteration of them. Well, it was a perfect segue to what we heard uh, Mr. Newmeyer to talk about later in the day about the possibility that these things are manipulated. So I think it was brilliant on their part and, and of course on Johnny's part as well to draw more suspicion on some of that evidence that Team Heard wants to bring in. Well, let's get to those text messages because I, I thought this was, I agree with Nima. Look at this, we're, we're agreeing. Well, we should agree. Former <laughs> prosecutors, we should agree all the time. Um, but this was a, a moment I, I was surprised that Johnny Depp was was going to a place I didn't think he was going to go because he's admitted so many things during the course of this trial from the, the, the drugs. the I mean, it's unreal the things that have come out that he has, you know, owned up to, but not these text messages. Let's take a listen. You've also said that with Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, yeah, that if you want to be with a woman sexually, that she is rightfully yours. That's ludicrous. You've also said that with respect to women that you want to be with, you've remarked, I need, I want, I take, haven't you? Equally as ludicrous, no. Can you pull up DX883, please? You can pull it what you like. I've never said those words. There's not enough hubris in me to eight, say anything eight, like eight, that. Eight, three. Mr. Depp, on February 22nd, 2017, you texted Mr. Duders, right, exactly, Molly's is rightfully mine. Should I not just and remove its hinges tonight? Did I read that right? You read it right. And yes. the one beneath that, you say, I want to change her understanding of what it is like to be thrashed about like a pleading mackerel. And then in all caps, you write, I need, I want, I take. Did I read that right? You read it right, but I did not write that. Okay. 
Perhaps when you I was wrote every other phone. text that you produced that came from you in this litigation, didn't you? Not necessarily. Sometimes okay. you give your people your phone to people and they now, text when you got off. All right, let's talk about DX883. Um, uh, uh, Kirk, it's a, it's a nasty text message. It, it does, it's not an admission that he abused Amber Heard, but he's not admitting that it's his. I'm listening to the way it's written, some of that language. It sounds kind of Johnny Deppy, doesn't it? I mean, the, the, the way he, you know, turns a phrase. So what, what, what do you think's going on here with DX883? So someone familiar with Johnny Depp could kind of imitate him in a text message. That seems possible in the same way a photo could be manipulated, right? And you've heard, Vinny, that, you know, this idea, as you said earlier, that he admitted, he's admitted to these horrific text messages, but when confronted with these, before you even saw him, you can pull up whatever you want. I never said that. He was adamant on the stand. And I think those prior admissions to those other horrific text messages is gives him credibility when he denies that so it does cast suspicion on these text messages at least in my mind and probably the mind of some of the jurors you know akila you know if he wrote it i mean you can own up to it you're and and you know it's something you wrote to one of your friends one of your guy friends and this is the way I've seen it in other trials, locker room talk, right? We've heard about that, right? Locker room talk. Exactly. But and like you said before, if it was something that he can own up so to, So what do you think was going on he... here? What was going on here in this moment, in this moment where it's, it's, it's in the same place as all the other text messages that they've been reading throughout this trial? It came from him in, in discovery. What, what do you think is going on here? I'll be honest with you. I don't think that uh, I think it was his text messages, but I think it was something that was egregious. It does make him seem bad. But I mean, Johnny's character is pretty believable so far. Uh, he's been impeccable on the stand. He's done a great job. So just own up to it. But at the end of the day, I don't think that this will make or break his case. I think he can overcome this issue um, because he's done a great job so far. But it was not a good look to deny something when it clearly came from his phone and was provided from his team for evidence. Yeah, here's the thing about this, Nima, is that if you admit it or say, I don't remember doing it, but I, I must have, like either way, right? It, it's not a big deal. It goes into this huge pile, six weeks worth of stuff. I mean, where in the pile are you going to see that next to, you know, all the MD, all the, all, the, all the ecstasy pills and the drugs and the this and the that? I mean, it's just in that pile, right? But now it's in a different pile. It's in the pile of, well, is he telling me the truth all the time? That's why I think it's a huge deal, because ultimately credibility is everything in this trial. Well, it is, Vinny, and this is the only criticism I have of Johnny Depp's testimony in this case. Admit it. It is a native message. It came from your assistant. A lot of folks on social media are asking, it says incoming. No, no, no. This is a native text that was subpoenaed from your assistant. It came from your phone. Admit it. I love the explanation he had during his case in chief. Look, he uses colorful language. He's upset. He's venting to friends. He learned this from Hunter S. Thompson. I like that story. Johnny, admit it. You didn't have to lie here. This is the one lie in the case. And frankly, the reason no one likes Amber Heard, because she's lied about so much. Separate yourself from her. Keep your credibility with the jury. That's how you win this case. Yeah, and, and Kirk, I'm going to ask you to respond to the same point I just made, which is you admit it, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's not, yeah, it's, it's ugly, right? But it's, but it's nothing compared to all the other stuff that is involved in this case. And now, all of a sudden, it is going to be like one of the headlines during those closing arguments for Amber Heard's team. Yeah, but listen, and I, I'm going to cast a little more doubt on this. You know, I know it's a native message. It was pulled over on the phone, but we don't know who did it. We don't know who sent it. And why does he, out of all these horrific messages, and I think I could make the argument that some of the messages were way more horrific than these, does he decide to sit there and say no? He denied it before it even was shown on the screen. 
to me, there's something to that. And it seemed credible when he made that denial. Is it possible he didn't remember? Yes, he was in a stupor, yes. But his denial was pretty strong on this point. And I think he's built up enough credibility where I think it will cast some doubt in the members of jurors. And it still, I think, will go into the scrap heap, if you will, because he's gained so much credibility. He's Teflon at this point in time. Yeah, uh, you, you may be right. I was it, to me, it, it stood out because it was. Um, what's wait? What's going on here? I mean, and I listened to the words, and you can say. I mean, he has a certain way of of creating these images and the way he writes. He's he, you know, even when he testifies, the words that he uses, his his testimony sounds like his text messages. So, I don't know. I I didn't understand it. But when we come back, okay. The Orient Express. We're going back on the Orient Express. What a big controversy today. Who abused who? You're looking at two photos. Is it the same photo? Or has one or the other or both been doctored? What is allegations from both sides now? This is an unbelievable development. We'll take a closer look when we come back. Designed to take you everywhere. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard had a little bit of a delayed honeymoon. You know, some people do that. They were busy shooting movies and whatever else was going on, right? So their honeymoon was a ride on the Orient Express. And no one murdered each other on, the, on that ride, but somebody abused someone. I mean, Amber said Johnny abused her, and here's Johnny telling the jury what happened to him. And where did you and Miss Heard go on your honeymoon? Um, we we um, took the uh, the Orient Express um, from Bangkok, Thailand to Singapore. And. What happened while you and Miss Heard were together on the Orient Express? Um, there, were, there, there, were, there were times when it was very agreeable, very nice. And then there were times when um, something, some, something had become dissatisfactory for her and she would uh, start the the um, rant the, the blooming of the of a fight w would would be on deck there and uh, and, that, and, and uh, at one at one point it didn't I mean it, I don't remember it lasting long at all. I, I just remember that um, I, I took a pretty good uh, shot to the um, to the face, to the eye, to somewhere up here. So I had a bit of a shiner. Um, but it, but but the it all went ended, and then everything got fine again, and we'd go to dinner, and it was all fine. Did Miss Hurd ever apologize to you for giving you the shiner? I don't, I don't recall. Mr. Depp, in these pictures that were taken before you got on the train ride for your honeymoon, where you claim that Miss Hurd hit you and gave you a black eye, you have the exact same shadow or sunburner mark under your left eye. The exact um, same mark, don't you? That's the, um... When you get a side light, you see the occipital mm -hmm. bone. So that is the exact area. Yep. And it's actually... A side you, light will cause that Yeah, well, the well. picture's not being taken from the side, is it? It's being taken no, no, head no, no, on, no, no, isn't it? No, no, no. The lens in front, yep. the light on the side, right. will cause that occipital bone, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. to... to appear sunken. Just like lights on the side of a train car, correct? 
Objection well, calls for speculation. You can take that down, Michelle. That was, in fact, in the dark. Sister, sister, I had a chef. I had people on either side of me. So. Mr. Depp, this is, the, this is the same picture or the same, um, the exact same scene displayed in PX 162 that you looked at this morning, correct? That looks like my face has been, the eyes have been photoshopped. This is the picture, this picture shows an injury to Mr. Depp's face, doesn't it? I disagree. I've seen this, this is, picture. Uh, okay, Ms. Hurd, I've seen I this got picture the answer. Thank before, you. and it, you he's disagree? not injured in it. He's not injured in this picture. Mm -hmm. That's your testimony. Fine. This one is uh, photoshopped. Ms. Hurd. Everybody's photoshopping everything. Uh, unbelievable. Let's bring back in the think tank, get to the bottom of the, or the, the mystery on the Orient Express. Kyla Coleman. Um, what's going on here? Did he get beat up? Was there, is there a black eye in the picture? Is it sunburn? Um, I think we have the side by side. Let's put the side by side of the same photo. And the one on the, on the left of your screen is the one that Amber Heard's team says is the picture. The one on the right is from Johnny Depp's team. Um, what do you see, Kyla? What's going on? I mean, honestly, it, it looks like there had to be some sort of filter or a Photoshop, definitely for the picture on the left-hand portion of the screen because the lighting looks a little lighter. The lighting in the right picture looks darker. Um, of course, each picture is going to correspond with whatever they uh, each side wants you to believe. But to be honest with you, I, I feel like Johnny Depp has kind of sunken in eyes, so it's a little hard to determine uh, what really happened here. So I don't know if this picture or these side-by-side -side pictures might be a wash for the jury because it's really really tough to to see or differentiate okay uh, Kirk Nurmi what happened in that one night in Bangkok where they showed a picture to look like he had a, a a black eye before he got on the Orient Express well look both parties Miss Heard and Mr. Depp are claiming alteration of the photos right but what's the big difference Johnny Depp had cooperation, right? He had Mr. Neumeister come in today. Now, he didn't speak about this photo, if I recall correctly, but he spoke about all the other photos, how they didn't have the source file. They didn't have the camera. They were altered. They were screenshots. All these different things that really cast suspicion on, and going back to what I said earlier, all the electronic evidence they presented. So when Mr. Depp comes forward and says, these things were altered and has an expert come talk about how they could have been because Oh, you threw away the phone, Amber. That's convenient, right? So all those things can kind of add up to give Johnny credibility in terms of which photos were actually altered. And it looks very suspicious for Mr. Neumeister's testimony regarding uh, Team Heard or Miss Heard before she got her lawyers altering these photographs and submitting to them in an altered fashion. Nima, I think you were the only one who smiled when I said one night in Bangkok. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, I like that reference. But even you know, I, I agree with Kurt somewhat, and this is why Photoshop pictures is a win for Johnny Depp because he doesn't need to prove he was it. He needs to pr disprove that Amber Heard was, and she has those pictures and she has the videos. And the jurors are going to need to hang their hat on something. You know, we've speculated: is it makeup? Is it filler or Botox? Or is it Photoshop? Something to show that the pictures and videos and the injury evidence that Amber Heard has presented is fake it's fabricated because that's what johnny depp needs to prove to win this case and i think finally today we got the answer i thought are we gonna have to wait for closing argument to see what depp's theory of the case is but now we know and it's photoshop and i agree photoshop is a win for johnny depp you know what's interesting kyla we look at that side by side picture amber heard claimed she was abused on the same ride that she was uh, strangled with the i think with a t-shirt or something and I'm, I'm looking at the picture and um I don't know, are there, is, is that, are there any strangulation marks anywhere, do you see? It's tough. If you look at the picture on the right hand of the screen, if you look around her collar area, it does look a little red. Um, but if you look at her picture that she submitted on the left hand side, you really can't see anything. So, man, this is just, this is crazy the way that things have been kind of fudged a little bit in this case. But I think it'll really be up to the jurors to kind of look at the evidence and really scrutinize what they've been presented. Yeah, this, um... You know, as I sit here tonight, I'm going to Virginia tomorrow, be there on the ground for tomorrow night on closing argument eve. Let me ask you a question about that. Um, 
all three of you, um, zero to ten, okay, zero to ten, ten being really important, zero being not important at all, the closing arguments for the seven jurors who must all agree on this. How important zero to 10, Kyla? I'm always gonna give it a 10. You need to be able to wrap up the information for the jury, it's concise, make things make sense. As long as things make sense and it's in a chronological order and it's something that is believable, you have the jury each time. Um, so I do think that there's been a lot of evidence presented and they're gonna have to wrap it up in a tight bow for this jury. All right, Nima and Kirk, I just need numbers. Nima first. I say three or four because both parties have testified. You don't typically get that. The jurors have made up their minds. Kirk? It's a, th it's a three for Johnny Depp and a 10 for Amber Heard because she needs to come back out, dig her out of the hole she's been in for the past six weeks. All right. Think Tank staying with us. When we come back, um, we're going to show you more of what happened inside the courtroom today. Also, you've got that manhunt. The woman in Austin, Texas, wanted in that love triangle murder. We've got the latest from the U.S. Marshal uh, when we come back. Mr. Depp, do you see the statement attributed to Mr. Waldman? I do indeed, yes. And when's the first time that you saw this statement? The, 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 this, this is the same. It's uh, the uh, uh, counterclaim to August 2020. After you saw these statements for the first time, did you form an understanding as to where they appeared? I didn't, uh, as to where they had appeared, these statements. In what, in what publication? Um... No, off the bat, I, I didn't know exactly. Um, it, it just seemed like a lot of word salad to me. Uh, we'll show you more of what happened today inside the courtroom in uh, Fairfax County, Virginia, in just a moment. But we have an update right now in the Love Triangle murder case we've been telling you about. Investigators suspect that 34-year-old Caitlin Armstrong, the woman you're looking at right here, is involved in the May 11th shooting death of cycling star uh, Mariah Wilson. Armstrong is at large and authorities are still searching for her. And today, the U.S. Marshal Service released surveillance video of Armstrong. The agency says she boarded a flight from Austin to Houston's Hobby Airport three days after the shooting. She then boarded a connecting flight. Investigators say she then went to New York's LaGuardia Airport. The Marshal Service tweeted that Armstrong was last seen wearing a blue denim jacket, black shirt, white jeans, a black COVID mask. And this is a bizarre detail, a possible yoga mat carrier on her shoulders. Armstrong is suspected of killing Wilson in Austin after finding out that Wilson had had an affair with Armstrong's boyfriend. Wilson was in Texas training for an upcoming race near Waco when a friend she was staying with discovered her body. Going to bring in a special guest to give us more information tonight. Joining me now from Austin, Texas, is Deputy U.S. Marshal uh, Brandon Phillips. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Where are we right now in this search um, uh, for this fugitive tonight? Yeah, right now with this search uh, with Caitlin Armstrong, uh, this is the case that we adopted from the Austin Police Department. Uh, we're searching to find out where did she go when she landed in New York. Uh, they're at LaGuardia Airport. Uh, from that point is, is the unknown right now. I think, you know, with this being an ongoing investigation, this is something that, you know, is going to continue uh, to have, you know, updates uh, as we proceed. We got individuals like yourself uh, with the news, you know, which then generates the social media that gives us a good platform. When, we, when our investigators can go out there like they did this week and were able to get that actual footage on surveillance at that airport that led us to Houston, that led us to LaGuardia. Those are, those are breaking points in this investigation that gives us some type of direction of travel. You know, originally we focused here in Austin, uh, and now we can, we can say now we're going to New York, uh, and we will try to find out what her association is there. And we're hoping that, well, you know, the public will give us some type of insight of, of a tip and you know, maybe she got on some type of Uber or Lyft 
um, and, and they'll remember, you know, to, you know, transferring her somewhere on a ride. So that, that's really where our hopes are at right now until we can find out that, you know, that destination point or, you know, what type of association or family members that she may have in that area. Um, what do we know about the, the, the travel to LaGuardia, right? That's the last known place that we have the video. Um, how many days ago was that? So that travel actually took place on May 14th. Uh, she was depicted on surveillance uh, camera there at uh, the Austin airport uh, around lunchtime, about 12.30 p.m., uh, boards that flight. Uh, and that was, remember, that was two days um, after she was questioned by police, three days after the homicide occurred. So at this time right now, uh, when she's seen on surveillance camera, there's still not a warrant for her arrest at that time. Gotcha. Now... We live in a world, and we see it here, where people are wearing masks, right? Someone's wearing a mask in public now. It's not unusual. It's not like they're necessarily hiding something. It seems to me that she may be keeping that mask on, and you really have to look maybe for the long hair and, 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 and other attributes. Yeah, it's always been a disadvantage, you know, unfortunately, with COVID-19 uh, for the past two to three years, where, you know, our investigators with this task force and others have encountered that problem. Uh, but I think with that descriptive, unique description of what she has with the long curly hair uh, and really continue to put her face out there, you know, she's an individual that uh, traveler, you know, she she was known to the uh, Austin community. She had a realtor's license. Uh, she participated in uh, yoga instruction. Um, so, you know, she was also a cyclist as well. I uh, can't say she was a professional like her victim, uh, but that is really well, what we are hoping to to spin up here uh, when we talk about a description and able to give, you know, that updated information that was captured on surveillance camera. And that's that's really what we have to rely on, uh, even when we're brought, blocked with someone that's, you know, has a COVID mask. Final question. If someone sees someone that they believe may be the suspect here, what exactly should they do? One of the things is, you know, keep your distance. Try to keep a visual eye. Uh, and you can always, at the earliest convenience, contact your local law enforcement agency. If for some reason you have the time and, and you are safe, feel free to reach out to our U.S. Marshal tip line at 1-800-336-0102. We're constantly uh, going through those tips. We've received approximately 37 tips uh, from the weekend to this point. Uh, some of those tips have been very helpful uh, in, in guiding us to where we are now, to where we were able to develop information at the airport that led us to Longoria. Uh, so we're just going to continue more on the uh, public support and assistance for this uh, while we continue uh, to look into other aspects as associations, our associates, uh, and family members. Brandon Phillip from the U.S. Marshal Service, appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much. Stay in touch, and, and we'll stay on top of this, and anything we can do to help, um, we'll, we'll continue you. to do. Thank you for having us on. All right, when we come back, folks, uh, time to hear from you, 13th juror. We're going to talk about Johnny Depp. We're going to talk about the damages that he's claiming. What damaged Johnny Depp more? Was it that op-ed written by Amber Heard, or was it testimony inside the courtroom? Your verdict next. So I was always a very private person. Um, so for me to come up here and stand before you or sit before you all um, and spill the truth um, is quite exposing and um, it's unfortunate that, that it's not only exposing for myself it's exposing for my family it's exposing for miss heard it's exposing for it's um it, it never had to go in this direction and so i i can't say that i'm embarrassed because i know that i'm doing the right thing About six years ago, um, uh, Ms. Heard made uh, some quite heinous and um, uh, disturbing, uh, brought these disturbing criminal um, 
acts um, against uh, me that uh, that were not based in any species of truth at the time because the news of this uh, her accusations had uh, sort of permeated the industry and then made its way through media and social media became quite a global um, uh, let's say quote unquote f fact if you will and since I knew that there was no truth to it whatsoever I felt it my responsibility to uh, to stand up not only for myself um, in that instance, but stand up for my children. Johnny Depp on the stand, retaking the stand today in his rebuttal case and a powerful testimony today. But he is claiming damage. And, and let's not lose sight of what this case is. It's defamation based upon Amber Heard's op-ed in 2018. That's... That's what they're claiming in the lawsuit is the source of the damage in this case. So I put it up on, on uh, social media to ask you, you know, which did more damage to Johnny Depp? Was it the 2018 op-ed or was it um, his testimony? I mean, so much was revealed during the course of these last six weeks. Which did more damage to Johnny Depp? We begin with our 13th juror comment of the day. That is Kim, who says, The op-ed started it all, and Johnny's name was smeared from that moment on. As Johnny said, I lost right then. Nima, your thoughts about weighing those two, you know, the, the potential damage that has been done to Johnny Depp through this very public trial versus uh, the op-ed that was, was written by, well, signed by Amber Heard, but really written by the ACLU um, uh, Communications Department. Vinny, the answer is none of the above. This case has helped Johnny Depp, and I don't think anyone actually read the 2018 op-ed. This is something that Johnny Depp himself said. This is six years coming. This is all about what happened in 2016 and earlier, except guess what? The parties entered into a release. They said they love each other. There's a non-disparagement, but Amber Heard wouldn't let it go. Just take your $7 million, pay it to charity, stop talking about your ex-husband, otherwise we wouldn't be here. But this is all about 2016 and earlier, not about 2018, even though, of course, we're acting like it is for the purposes of this case. Well stated. Alicia tonight, during the trial, it became clear that his career was damaged before the op-ed. No one wanted to work with him. After Cross, it's become clear that he maliciously intended to ruin Amber's career, too. Misery loves company. He's a very destructive man, and I'm glad that it's all being exposed. Kirk Nurmi, do you think there's... Is, what is this trial about? Is, is it about Johnny reestablishing and clearing his name, or is it about bringing down Amber Heard? Well, I'm, one, I'm going to completely disagree with Alicia, and sometimes I think, Vinny, the road we have to travel to impose truth upon the lies that others have cast upon us is sometimes a tough one to travel, but it's worth it because the cathartic effect, and we saw some of what Johnny spoke to that today, saying six years, I finally got my truth out. And I think ultimately at the end, this is going to make him a happier person, and he's going to make him a more employable as an actor and a, and, and a better human being in the end. And I think that's what we're going to see out of this trial. Heather, tonight, between the two presented choices, I would say the op-ed. It was clearly about Johnny Depp and intended to be that way. However, I would bring it back further to the TRO and subsequent People magazine cover story. Kyla Coleman, do you think the jury will make will distinguish between what happened in 2016 and the op-ed, or does it all kind of get kind of what Nima was saying, kind of getting mushed together here? Yeah, I think for sure it'll be jumbled together. But I think what the bigger picture here is that Johnny got a chance to tell his story. And it's not often that we hear men talk about domestic violence. 
ever. So this is a chance for um, him to advocate for himself, maybe for other individuals who have been watching to advocate for themselves as well as men. Um, prior to coming into this case and watching this trial, I believed Amber, I honestly did. Now having watched, having listened, having seen her demeanor on the stand and seen her character, I totally believe Johnny and I, I hope that he receives justice in this case. And you know, there's something else, uh, Nima, we should take away from this is, is the, the power of cameras and microphones in courtrooms to allow people to understand and, and trust our system a little better, right? Over there where they wear the wigs, no cameras, one judge, 71 years old, comes out and says, Johnny Depp is a wife beater, that's it, it's over. Um, we do things a little differently here. I mean, much differently. We do, Vinny, and you and I agree. We love cameras in the courtroom, not because we're here on court TV every week, because it shines a light on our system of justice. doesn't matter whether it's criminal or civil. But one thing I got to ask, and we see trends. Are we going to see a trend of abusers filing against their accusers going forward? Because clearly it's worked for Johnny Depp. Yeah. It, it, and Kirk, that is a, a great talking point because... If you're falsely accused of something, it, it can destroy you. And you do have an avenue in our system of justice, which is defamation. I mean, that's, that's our system is set up. Someone falsely accuses you, you can sue them for defamation. And that's what Johnny Depp says is happening right here. This is the proper use of our system if, if, if you believe you've been wronged. Well, you're right, Vinny. I mean, this is exactly why we have defamation laws. We think about this op-ed, the way I look at this op-ed, it's another weapon of personal destruction that Amber Heard has used. It's no more different than the video she took of him, the tips she gave to TMZ, and the defamation case. And, and in fact, having cameras in that courtroom allowed him to tell his story in a different way. And that's exactly what our judicial system is in place for. And that's exactly what the kind of justice Johnny Depp, I think, is going to get at the end of this trial. All right. Fantastic job tonight. Thank you so much, Kyler Coleman. Nima Romani, Kirk Nurmi. We'll see you again real, real soon. Wow. Don't forget, folks, tomorrow I'll be live in Virginia outside the courthouse. Come on by. Say hi if you want. Uh, and then we'll be there on the verdict watch on Friday. In the meantime, I need your help. Skylar Richardson, 15-year-old from Bakersfield, California, has been missing since May 2nd. If you see Skylar, please call 911, 1-800-THE-LOST, or the great uh, folks over at the Bakersfield Police Department. Please, please, if you see Skylar, pick up the phone, make that call. Let's get her to safety. That's it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Vinny Politan. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Have a great evening. And as always, don't forget to hug the kids. As I left the room, I slid down the stairs. And she slipped, her legs went up. He came running back to help me and carried me to my room. Did you ever ask Whitney to move out of Penthouse 4? No, I did not. No. You've said before that if, if you want to be with a woman sexually, that she is rightfully yours, haven't you? That's ludicrous. I, I have vetted Ms. Her. Mr. Depp, you got your chance Warner to speak Brothers this morning. Had, Your Honor, I'd, I'd, Warner Brothers right. had two friends. Mr. Depp, if you could just answer the questions. And that's okay. not a handle. Neither of those are handles of vodka. It's that big. It's broken. The handle's up the top. Mr. Neumeister, what's your opinion about the authenticity here? There's no way for any forensic expert to validate any of these photos. No matter what happens, I did get here, and I did tell the truth.